On October 23, 2002, at the House of Culture Theatre in Moscow, a sold-out audience settled down for the second act of the Russian musical, Nord Ost. Dozens of heavily armed men and explosive-laden women interrupted the performance with gunfire. The terrorist leader, Mafsar Barayev, demanded the withdrawal of Russian troops from Chechnya. Barayev prepared his followers to blow up the theater and everyone inside it. The suicide squad numbered 22 men and 19 women. The woman's job was to guard the hostages and on command detonate the bombs strapped to their bodies. The Chechen women were all educated professionals, pushed toward jihadist extremism after losing the rebel husbands, sons and brothers in the Second Chechnya War. It was clear from the start that the Russians would never give in to the Chechens' demands. Everyone expected a bloodbath. Russia's Special Forces Unit, Spetsnaz, began planning their daring assault at a replica location across the city. To appease the terrorists and buy more time for planning the raid, Russian negotiators falsely promised the arrival of a general for face-to-face -face negotiations. 57 hours into the hostage situation, the Russians launched their secret weapon never used before, a powerful anesthetic blended into an aerosol spray. The gunmen fled from the gas, leaving the Chechen women at their posts inside the auditorium. The Russians waited hours to ensure that the gas knocked out everyone. If just one Chechen widow awoke during the raid, there would be no survivors. The Russians stormed in and faced Barayev's brief last stand. All the terrorists were killed, and without the loss of a single Russian soldier, it was an astounding victory. Fearing a delayed explosion, the rescuers raced to evacuate the building, but there were not enough stretchers or medics. Sleeping hostages, already fighting for breath, were carried out with their heads rolled back and were laid face up in the rain. Dozens simply choked on their own vomit or swallowed their own tongues. There are plenty of antidotes to the unknown gas, but too few medics to administer them. Hostages died in their seats, on the front steps of the theater, and on the floors of city buses ferrying them to hospitals. 129 hostages died in the botched aftermath, and the Russians' miraculous victory turned to dust.